I'm going to talk a little bit about AC adapters. Uh, mostly how to repair them. Uh, I see these questions a lot on forums. Uh, it's really basic stuff, but it's surprisingly how easy it is to repair them. I've got an NES, original NES adapter here, and it has a bad tip. Normally you wouldn't, this is the first time I've ever seen it, but the actual tip's coming apart. I've never seen that before, but normally what you do is you plug it in, and then you get your meter, and for the NES you'll be actually measuring AC. You just look on the actual uh, specs of the AC adapter and see what outputs AC or DC. And then take your leads and just measure the output like that. Now it doesn't matter, red or black, um, if it's outputting DC, then it's you know it's got a polarity on it. And uh, if it's positive tip, then you'll see positive voltage if you do this. But if you have them switched, then you'll see a negative voltage. And that's just because your leads are switched. It doesn't really matter as long as you're showing um, at or above the rated voltage of the AC adapter. If you're seeing voltage, then it's uh, it's, it's either okay or you've you've got a uh, momentary open in the cord. I see this a lot. This is one of the main reasons these fail is the cord itself is bent around a lot, especially towards the tip or towards the actual transformer right here, and it gets bent so much that the wires inside create an open. And I do mean open, I do not mean short. Short means something completely different. Short means um, two wires are touching that aren't supposed to be touching. And open means two, you know, one wire or whatever that should be touching is not touching. Very simple. So it creates an open and then it can't output any voltage or current. Uh, on this one, it's going to be pretty easy. We'll just replace the tip on it. Uh, you can buy new tips, uh, any electronics outlet. I get these from Mauser for pretty cheap probably under a dollar. Um, but sometimes the open will be in the middle of the cord. Um, of course, uh, if I know it's an open, or if I think it's an open, the first thing I want to do is open up the transformer and actually test for voltage on the transformer itself. If I have voltage on the transformer, then I've got an open in the cord. If I don't have voltage on the transformer, the transformer is bad. I've only seen that a couple times, and I've repaired uh, at least two, maybe three dozen of these uh, AC adapters. Uh, one of the big things with these is usually they just get dropped and the case cracks. And there's only the two screws holding it. And you kind of need a special tip to open them. I don't know what it's called, but It's like a it's like a flat spade tip except it's got a cutout in the center. And that fits right over the head holding the transform together. So let's open it up and see what it looks like. I've actually broken posts, the internal post that this metal screw threads into just by unscrewing it. It's a fairly long screw and I've actually uh, gotten used to tightening it a little bit before I unloosen it. Just so all the force is not with untightening it. It's kind of a mechanical trick. So anyway, the top comes off and there you go. And these are the posts that will break off. I see, I see that quite a bit. You know, when they're dropped or whatever and they're falling open, the screw will still be, still be attached to the post, but the post will no longer be attached to the actual shell. You just use some super glue, hold it together, put a big clamp on it, let it sit for a while, and it'll be fine. Or, if that's not working, just put some super glue around the edge, and then put it together and clamp it, and let it sit for a while. And then it's permanently sealed, of course, but at least it's not falling apart. So right here is your output terminals on the transformer. We'll just uh, plug it in and very carefully do not touch anything. Put your meter on AC, touch that, and you'll on a NES AC adapter you'll probably see 
you know, in excess of 10 and a half volts because there's no load on it. If that's not plugged in, then you'll see excessive voltage there. That's okay. As a matter of fact, if you see less than uh, 9 volts, then there's probably a, a problem with the transformer. So let's, uh, I'm going to run an extension cord over here and plug it in. Okay, here's my live extension cord. Plug that in. I'm still on AC volts. There you go, 10.23 volts. So I know the transformer is good. And just to prove that the tip is bad, there you go. Now I'm getting 1.1 volts. If I shake it around a little bit, ah, look at that, 10.23 volts. If I mess with it, so it's definitely busted and needs a new tip. Should be fairly easy to do. Now, what if it was the cord itself and not the tip or the transformer? Um, what I have here is a couple. Uh, I'm plug this. I have a couple AC adapters here. I've marked this one as bad, and it outputs 9 volt DC 500 milliamp. Now, usually for an NES, I prefer over 500 milliamp, but this, this is just an example. Uh, this one's 9 volts, 800 milliamps, but it doesn't really matter the voltage or amperage if you're going to use this as a donor of a cord. What you can do is take these apart. Some of them are just sealed like there is zero screws on this one. I don't even think there's one on a stick or nothing. Just bust it apart. Uh, same with this one. Just bust it apart and use the cord off of it. It has the right, this one does not have the right tip on it, but this one does, although it's at a 90 degree angle. But all you have to do is take it off there on the, on the NES. It does not matter which wires to where. Just solder mount it, just desolder this cord and solder on the new cord, and you fixed it. Now, like for instance, this one has the right voltage and plenty of amperage, but the wrong tip. And if it works okay, all you would really need to do is put a new tip on it, and you can use this for your uh, AC adapter for your NES. Um, this tip also, I think, also works on uh, like Sega Genesis Model One, but of course, Sega Genesis has a different polarity than uh, what this one is. I think this one, I think uh, Sega Genesis needs a uh, negative tip, so you just have to be very careful of how you wire that. And again, use your multimeter, put it in continuity mode, you know, and, and see which wires wired where. And like on uh, the NES one. There's, there's two wires. The one with the green is probably the inside wire, and then the bare copper is probably uh, the actual ring. And then the inside, which we call the tip, will be the green wire. Of course, on the NES it doesn't matter. So, you always have options. If you, if you want to keep the original look of the NES you know, the housing and all that, but the cord is bad. You can just steal a cord off something else. If you don't worry about the actual transformer the way it looks, you just want a working AC adapter, but it has the wrong tip, put on a new tip, and you're good to go. Last thing I'll mention on the, uh, the NES transformers, the, the couple that I've had go bad were of different design and the prongs were oriented differently so I couldn't just remove the bad transformer with the good cord and swap it in you know, and swap it with a different housing. The housing itself down here, what, what actually pulls the transformer the actual ribs down in there were different between them. So it's something to be aware of that you may not always be able to swap parts Okay, so on the uh, NES AC adapter that I'm pretty sure has a bad tip, I'm just going to go ahead and replace the tip. Like I said, I get these from Mauser. This one kind of unscrews, and then you get access to the prongs. So that's pretty easy. And then all I'm going to do is cut the old tip completely off. And then I will back, maybe 
three quarters of an inch of the insulation. two wires, get this bare stuff, and then the green one, and then of course you want to cut the insulation on the green one too. into the center post. Make sure no stray wires Keep touching somewhere else. Feed the uh, sleeve onto the wire first. Actually, crimp that down on the end so it holds both wires. Don't be afraid to use a lot of solder. Make sure it wets the uh, metal prongs that you're soldering to also. Second to cool. What we need to do is slide the cover back up there, screw it down. I also like to add some uh, super glue to it, I'll add some to the threads. some to the strain relief if you really wanted to. That way when it's pulled apart, the 
super glue will attach to the string relief and it's not just pulling on the wires that we just soldered on. So now we can plug it in. Go back on voltage AC. Probes in. There you go. 10.33 volts. Fixed. It's that easy.